Hey, shiny crafty people, Tim Totten here, and welcome back to the channel. You know, um, people have asked me many times in many videos, what kind of sewing machine are you using? And a lot of times I've answered a Singer S16. This is the Singer. Um, but today I wanna show off our Janome 1600P, which is just over my shoulder there. And it is a totally fun machine, almost exactly the same as the Singer, but um, it's still available for purchase. It's kind of hard to find the Singer, so the Janome 1600P is what we're gonna cover today. Join me over there and I'll show you what we need to do. The Janome 1600P is a straight stitch sewing machine and it's got a metal body, all this metal construction, and it's a little larger than a standard home machine. So it means that the opening is a little bit larger and it also is a little bit faster than a standard home machine. But you remember I said it's a straight stitch machine, so it doesn't have all of those fun decorative stitches that you might have on a home machine, but what you uh, what you give up in that particular part, you're gonna have extra in power and in terms of speed. So let's show off some of the details of this machine and why I love it so much. One of the first things you're gonna notice is that uh, this is a little bit larger machine here than a standard sewing machine that you might buy from a regular fabric store or even online. It's got, uh, not doesn't have all those crazy features, but it's got some really amazing ones that I'm going over with you right now. First of all, again, it's all metal. So everything here is made out of metal. This whole thing is metal. There are a little few plastic pieces, but the body of the machine is metal. Also, it's got some really fantastic features on this particular machine that I pay a little extra for. It has the needle down, needle up feature that allows me to decide where my needle is going to be. It's got a bobbin winder that can be used even when the machine is sewing. You can wind bobbins, which I'll show you in a minute. It's got an automatic thread cutter. I push that button and it cuts the thread. It's so good. A really good strong reverse. And of course, it also is really fast. And that's why it has these three speeds here. You'll see it goes from turtle to regular rabbit to holy cow jack jackrabbit there. And it's so useful. So why don't we actually do a little tour of each of the individual functions. Uh, starting from the right here, there are, is a stitch length indicator here, and I can twist that up and down. It also has the reverse button. That's this big bar. It's so easy to find. It's not a tiny little button somewhere on the machine. It's this big bar, really easy to sew fast. It has one of my favorite features. I have always, since the very first time I bought a machine that had this, I have spent the extra hundred or so dollars. It's the automatic thread cutter. This is so good. So I've been stitching a little bit on the machine here, and if I push that button, It'll automatically cut the thread so I can remove it. It's such a lifesaver. It's a game changer for sewing. It's something I think more people should do. Now, coming over, we have our speed control. Now, <laughs> I'm a little crazy. I like to sew at the jackrabbit function. You'll notice here that it's got three different, three different uh, speeds. It has turtle, regular rabbit, and jackrabbit. So you'll see in the terms of speed, the I'm going to go full speed on the... Uh, the pedal. That's full speed at turtle. We'll go up to the rabbit a little faster. And then of course, full speed on jackrabbit is a whole lot faster. Again, pulled my thread out. One of the other nice features is if I'm sewing and I want to turn a corner uh, next to that, we'll skip the bobbin for a moment. We're going to come to this needle up, needle down. You'll notice that when I finish sewing, because the arrow is in the up position, it stops with my needle in the up position. If, however, I push the button to where it goes to the down arrow, then when I stop sewing, it'll always stop in the down position so that I'll be able to turn my, my uh, sewing. And it'll leave the needle down so that it gives me that nice pivoting. Now, the fun part is, is that when you do press your, uh, your thread cutting, and I'm gonna press that off screen here, it does automatically bring the needle to the up position so you then can remove everything. But the moment you go back in and start sewing, it will stop in the down position so long as the button is with the arrow down. Next, I wanna talk about winding a bobbin. So let's imagine for a moment that I'm stitching and I run out of thread. Well, I would, it runs out of thread, bobbin thread, I can pull out from the piece here and reach in and pull out the bobbin case. And it looks very similar to a standard bobbin case. The difference is it uses um, metal bobbins, which are really nice. I actually buy these in bulk. We buy like 50 to 100 of them at a time. 
And then it always goes in where the fat, the thread pulls off clockwise. So you see that thing turning clockwise? And I just bring it in just like a regular bobbin case for the standard sort of, and it flips in from the side. And then I'll just hold my thread and advance my my uh, my turn wheel and pull both threads out. And then this is again what I like is I just put the presser foot down. I'm reaching to the back for the, and I push my automatic thread cutter and it gets those threads out of there. They're gone out of the way. And I can start sewing again, but now of course I need to wind that empty bobbin that came out, right? So what I can easily do is go up to the bobbin here. I have thread already in the bobbin section. See, this is the thread that's gonna sew with my machine, the white thread here. But I'm gonna go ahead and thread a black bobbin. So I have that threaded through and I go ahead and place it um, in the hole of the bobbin case, our bobbin, um, the empty bobbin there. Hold it up, push this over and I'll hit the bobbin button here and it'll start to wind a bobbin. And then I can go right back while it's doing that and still be sewing because they're independent of each other. Does not care. I can be doing all of my stuff, go back in here and sew other things, and the bobbin is still winding the entire time. Two separate motors handling it. It is so nice. Now I wanna show you a few other features as we thread it through the machine. Um, and, and I'm gonna unthread it just to show you how you want to thread this particular machine. Let me um, cut my thread out. So to thread this machine, we're gonna bring the thread through that upper, through the upper piece and down. Skip all of this stuff here, that's all for the bobbin. Once the thread comes off of our spool and through the top piece, I'm gonna bring it through these holes at the top. And there's three holes in this metal piece. We're gonna go through the one closest to us, so the farthest one from the machine, pull it straight through, and then we're gonna come back and go through the very back one and then come out as well. And I have a very specific way I do this, so I might get my hand in front of the camera for a moment, but I'll try to give you enough of a view how this works. Now, the other thing is you have to make sure that when you pull it through that that thread goes over the top. See how it's over the top here? Now it comes through. Now this metal, this uh, purple plastic knob has two metal washers behind it that face together and the thread has to go between those. So I'm gonna bring the thread between those and it kind of gives a little, just a beginning tension on it. I come down around this other purple uh, tensioner and this has a spring in it that gives a certain amount of tension back and forth. And I put that into the slot, there's a slot between it and bring it all the way straight back up. And then it's gonna hook on a little metal piece that bounces around in here. So I'm gonna hook it on that metal piece. So now if I were to hold it, you can see it kind of pulls a, a metal thing there. Underneath this particular tabby part, back up through ooh, this first sort of connector deal, and then through the hole on this arm. This is the arm you need to, that will, that pulls the thread, that gives it the right tension so that the bobbin can connect below. So I've gone now through that. So it's come through, down and around, up, and then I sort of connect it right back through there. So once it's made its thread way through there, back through our piece here, now it's gonna come down and go through this mechanism on the, on the sewing machine. So it needs to go behind this part, but in front of this part, if that makes sense. So all I'll do is I'll take the thread and I will catch it right there and then carry it towards the back of the machine and see that it goes through it. All right, now. So I've got my thread coming through this part and I'm gonna go ahead and hook it behind the needle at the top. And then I'll push the threader down until it goes through the needle. Let's put the barb through the needle. I will hold the thread back along that. Oh, I just dropped it off again. Um, there we go and pull it through and it literally pulls the thread right through. It's so nice if you don't wanna to have to figure out how to thread that yourself. And then of course, if I wanna shorten this piece of thread, I can just put it underneath the presser foot, close the presser foot, hit the automatic thread cutter and it chops that off. Another great feature of this machine is the knee lift. So that's on the machine and 
and it lifts the presser foot up and down. So you push with your knee and it'll lift your presser foot. That's really exciting. Um, also, there's a pressure for your pressure presser foot right here. That's hard to say. And that'll that'll show this right on this gauge. It'll show you how much pressure you're pushing down on your presser foot. And of course, a couple of the great things that you might not think about would be it comes with a guide that you can screw onto the machine. And this allows you to create a set of fabric guide as well as it's got plenty of measurements along the bottom there. So that's the Janome 1600P. It's a fantastic sewing machine. I'll put a link down in the description below to where you can order one online. But of course, you can go to a local sewing machine retailer and order it. That's probably the best way to support your community and make sure that there's someone in your community who can fix your sewing machine when things go wrong. Because trust me, that is just as important as having a sewing machine at a good price. So thank you so much for watching this video about my Janome 1600P sewing machine. And until next time, folks, stay crafty. Bye for now. Oh, I just love this machine. Ooh.